to episode three of Kent Core, TV2's newest show all about music. I'm your host, Ryan Polisena, and I'm joined today by ultra-talented multi-instrumentalist, Reese Maslin. Okay. All right, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, the projects you're involved in, the ensembles, all of that oh stuff? Oh my God, I'm in way too many prog projects to like, even remember at this well, point. Give us a good overview of yourself. So I like, need to know a little bit. I mainly play in a, in a band called Yuri which is like a hardcore or like post-punk kind of like really hard rock band. Um, besides that, like I played with Frank Tonkar a little bit in our like projects. Um, I do a lot in like East Ninth. And then I used to be in a band called No Funk No Justice. I just like recently quit that. You um, can only do so much, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm in way too many. Too many. You've had to cut them projects. down. Yeah. I just recently joined a band called Adora. All right. And uh, we've done a few shows. They're fun. So, like, genre-wise, do you, you kind of have a couple genres? Yeah, yeah, I, I do, like, whatever. I guess, like, the one thing I don't do is, like, jazz. <laughs> I can kind of do it, but I'm not real good. Everything but, yeah, I mean, like, anything from, like, indie rock or just, like, indie music in general to, like, hardcore or, like, metal, whatever. Like, I, I play it all. I like it all. Do you have a favorite? Definitely metal. Metal's your favorite. Definitely it's your go-to. Yeah. It's, I've, I've always listened to it. Like, it's what I've been more involved with like the longest and like I've written more of that and just like played with more metal bands but like I, I do like all this stuff like all like indie or just like rock in general so your newest project is that metal mm -hmm. okay so Yuri. Yuri's okay Yuri's your newest project and it's metal good awesome um so I mentioned that you're a multi-instrumentalist. Can you outline all, all <laughs> Can you outline the instruments that you play okay, um, for us? I like I consider myself like a guitarist mainly, but I've been playing drums and percussion for like almost as long. Like a little a little less, but like it's my secondary for sure. Um, besides that, like I can kind of play bass like enough to get by. Enough to get by. And like whatever style, like minus jazz. Like but no play. jazz. We got <laughs> no it. No jazz. We, we don't like no jazz. jazz. <laughs> um, so when you're like writing songs, it would be guitar. Yeah, around. yeah. I most of the time it's based around guitar parts, but like, it just it just depends on context because sometimes it's like beats or like whatever, mm -hmm. but mainly guitar. Okay, and so um, you're involved in all of these groups and such. Do you have a favorite show? A favorite? Uh, musical experience, a favorite, oh, wow. like, wow, give a, that's a we need to, question. okay, all right, well, favorite, one of your favorite experiences playing music or a band you've been part of? Wow, or? um, honestly, like, really recently, in fact, it was like, last weekend, uh, I was with Frank's band, I was playing guitar with his, like, EP release show, which is Diamond Eyes, wherever the camera is. Diamond Eyes. <laughs> Check it out <laughs> on Spotify and Apple Music and whenever you can stream music, it's everywhere. Awesome. But yeah, we, we played at Susie's Downtown in Youngstown and it was so fun. Like we had uh, a violinist from North Carolina come awesome. and she played on a few songs and we also had a keyboardist from uh, New York. He's like a awesome. really good friend of ours. His name is Ben That's awesome. and we got to play with him. It was just, it was so fun. Good. So that was one of my, recently that was one of my more like favorite experiences. Awesome. It was a good time. So you mentioned your newest band, Yuri. Yeah. Um, and are you putting new music out? What's your new project? What is it looking yes, like? Okay. Um, we have been writing for like about a year now. Uh, we are just now finishing up like all the production stuff. Um, we released a song two weeks ago called Not the First, Not the Last, and that's on all platforms. And now we were supposed to release a song today called OBE, but uh, our distribution got like messed up. So we're probably gonna release it like tomorrow or within the next few days, hopefully tomorrow. But um, you'll get to see tonight actually. Awesome, yeah, you're gonna play it for us soon. Yeah, but um, um, we also have like an EP coming out in the next like few weeks. Awesome. Just like a five song thing. Awesome. I'm stoked. So it's, been, it's been so long, like we've been writing for a long time. It's like, it's finally time to put it out. Good. So Yuri is made up of. It's just me and uh, Jamie Vitula. Jamie Vitula. He plays drums in Spirit of the Bear, and awesome. he goes to like Tri C in Cleveland. Awesome. Yeah, he's a cool dude. How Real long has friend. this been happening? How long has it been <coughs> in the um, works, as they say? Yeah. So we started. I want to say it was like December of. I think it was December of like 2017 or 2018, 
but like we've been writing since then and then we recorded drums with Joe Amadio in the summer of this year or no of 2019 and then like I just started doing all the production like very recently awesome yeah it's getting mm -hmm. finished soon soon <laughs> okay soon. so um with all of this and uh do you want any, you have anything else you want to plug? Anything else you want to talk about? Give um, us, give it, we need to have the essence of you right now. Okay. So give us essence the plug. Of me. Yes. So, uh, yeah, pretty much just Yuri is coming out soon. Uh, Yuri's coming out hopefully in the next few days. And then the EP, you should be tuned for like, let's say mid March is when mid -March. it's going to come. Mid March. You're going to. So stay tuned for that. Awesome. Um, besides that, Adora is playing a show, I think, next month. I'll be playing with them. Kent Core, uh, <laughs> February 28th. Yeah, Yuri awesome. will be here. And we'll get to give you like a full the performance. The full performance. We'll get the full effect. Playing songs off of our new EP, and I think we might do a new song. One new song? Oh, can we just drop something there? Maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe. Awesome. So, um, all right, with that, with that, we're going to just, you know, keep going. <laughs> um, you got anything else you want to let us know about yourself? Oh, all right. So um, when we come back, Reese will debut his new song, OBE, from his band, Yuri. <laughs>
What's up and welcome back to Kent Core. I'm Ashley and tonight Reese and I are going to dive deeper into his band Yuri. Alrighty. So basically tell me about your upcoming single. I know we talked about it a little, in, a little bit earlier but you know. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> uh, yeah so like OBE. Yeah OBE. Tell me about so, OBE. Like when we started writing the EP like as a whole all the songs are just like the music aspect of all the songs are just kind of random. It was like whatever we were really feeling. Um, a lot of our songs that we write are like super spontaneous. Mm -hmm. But lyrically, I was really, really into like dreaming and like sleeping, and like just like the the science and behind sleeping, specifically yeah. dreaming. I, I no, thought, it's super like, interesting. Right, like, like lucid dreams, I always thought were cool. Like I've always wanted to have one, but like I just they kind of freak me out. I won't lie. I've had like two, and they were like <laughs> ten seconds long each, and I woke up like immediately. I was mm -hmm. so upset because I wish that they could have gone on for longer. But you know, yeah, like OBE specifically is about like sleep paralysis or like an out of body experience, which is mm -hmm. what OBE stands for. And it's like, it's all like real metaphorical because like the song is like about someone, but it's like told through the guise of like dreaming. Okay. Or at least like my attempt at it. That actually like really ties in well with one of my other questions because it was gonna like like nod to like the lyrics like every time I die and under oath like yeah please tell me about that like what what was like the metaphor with that oh with like out of body experiences like with the out of body experiences like every time I die and like the under uh, under oath uh, like how like they relate to yeah these um well like Keith Buckley from Every Time I Die like one of the best like metal lyricists I think like ever he's just he writes such like interesting things mostly like they're all super like witty and like n they're never really like on the nose mm -hmm. but they're like always super clever but like also you can understand them and like it like from a first listen it's not like you have to like dive super deep into them to like get it but I, I try to borrow from that kind of stuff or like his lyrics yeah and um I don't know if there's really anyone else that I like. Really try to write. You just got like. your one. Your yeah, one but he inspo. like. Oh, I just I just love the way he writes. But I try to write in metaphors, and like try to write in metaphors that can like pertain to certain situations, mm -hmm. but like not have them be super like deep or obscure. Yeah. So there, you can like you can understand it. Like it's like relatable, but it's all about like a specific person just through the guise of like dreaming. It's it's like, it's weird. I, I try to tie in those two elements together. The whole record is kind of like about a specific person. Okay. But it's like, yeah, I just try to tie it in. I just try to use metaphors to make it known. I love Instead that. Instead of just being flat out like, oh, I miss this girl. Uh, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. No, like keeping it, keeping it where you can tell that there's something there, but like nodding to other things. I yeah. love that. I love the, the artistry in there. Oh, thanks. Um, Okay, so we kind of talked about all of my questions in that one, but okay, so we, you're not the only person of Yuri. Tell me about the rest mm -hmm. of the band. So yeah, uh, Jamie Vitulo is the only other guy, and like him and I have been friends for a really long time. Like I've known him, in since like we were in high school together. In fact, like when I like the first like few like days of high school, specifically in like it was like summer, and we were in like band camp together. Mm -hmm. I remember meeting him there, and we were like instantly friends. And we were always like really tight. Um, it was like my junior year and I think his senior year. We started just like learning songs together. Like we would jam like Slipknot just in his basement. Love that. Like just us two. And like we always, we wrote a few songs like way back then. But we never could find like a bassist or anyone else to like write with. So at one point we were just like, why not we, why don't we just like write it and play it ourselves? Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of bands that like, I admired him like he admired too like he showed me this one band 68 which um I think we draw a lot of influence from it's uh made up of this dude Nico and this other guy Josh Scoggin who used to be the vocalist for a band called The Chariot and another band called Norma Jean who, okay like, we are both in the we are both really into those bands Big they're fans. so good but like um yeah they are just like two-piece bands well 68 specifically is a two-piece there's another band called Royal Blood, too, that I am really, really into, mm -hmm. who's also, like, a two-piece. And we were like, you know, if, if they can do it, like, why can't we? So we just, I bought this little, like, pedal, and what it does is it just, like, 
makes guitar noise sound like bass noise. So I run that into like a separate rig. So you so, do guitar and bass. Yeah, so it, it's, I'm not actually playing bass, but it sounds like there's you're like that low end like bass You're beautifully rumble. and intelligently pretending you're playing bass. Trying to, yeah. But <laughs> that's kind of, yeah, that's really cool. Thanks. Yeah, we, we experimented with that like for a long time and eventually like found our sound. And Alrighty. we just kind of write in, in like the vein of that. Love it. All righty. So that's all the time we have for this segment. And when we come back, our producer is going to be talking with Frank Tonkar and Reese Maslin. <laughs> Harder Plumbing has been in our community for over 40 years. I have banks in several banks, but have never been treated I gotta... with kindness and professionalism as Portage Community Bank. From every aspect of my business, Portage Community Bank takes the time to care. And on a day when I can't get away from the office, PCB comes to me, and that's a big deal to me. And if Ray has to stop in at PCB, PCB staff is always ready to lend a hand. Ray knows the difference a community bank can make. Portage Community Bank is neighbor serving neighbors. Hello everyone, my name is Jordan and I am the producer of Kencore and today I'm taking some time away from the control room to not look at the right camera and to catch up with some of my friends that are from Youngstown. So over here, I have my dear friends Reese and Frank. Frank, you're new to this episode, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Frank Tonkar. Uh, I'm not sure what camera I'm looking at either, but uh, I'm happy, happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> you just gotta look for the red light, that's there about it. Are. So Frank, <laughs> could you tell me a little bit about your um, musicianship and what you do? Yeah, so uh, I, uh, I've been playing music for most of my life. Um, I grew up playing guitar and uh, kind of branched out from there on you know, all sorts of different, different instruments and whatnot. Now I kind of mostly just do like, like a solo thing. Uh, I just put out a record mm -hmm. last week uh, called Diamond Eyes. Uh, it's got five songs and that's, that's pretty much it now. I kind of... They suck. <laughs> he's not wrong. But yeah, I kind of <laughs> just bounce around with a bunch of different bands now and uh, mostly focus on uh, my own stuff. But yeah. That's very cool. So this segment, this is just my fun segment. Sweet. It's not really music related. <laughs> I'm just gonna ask you a nice little hodgepodge of questions, and we're just we're just gonna have a bow wow. It's gonna be fun. What's bow wow, baby? What's bow wow, baby? So oh, wow, wow. this one's specifically for Frank, but it's really for all of us. You know, we we all have pretty long hair. We got yes. some great hair on this this little section of couch. Um, Frank, okay. how do you how do you keep your hair so nice? Um, it's a it's a strict regiment, really. Mm -hmm. um, Daily, I will, I will, well, I guess not daily, um, you know, shampoo every other day or so. Um, and then after that, you actually use um, dog poo extract <laughs> every day. Gosh. I know that method. Every day. Whether you shower or not, you just rub it in. Uh, showers help to get it out, but um, yeah, that really gives it softness. Um, then you, you have to follow it up with, with some, you know, uh, various uh, fragrance oils, because it does not smell great, as you could imagine. Fragrance oils. But That's yeah. truly incredible. Yeah. I think I might try doing that. You absolutely now. should. Um, I recommend everyone uh, do that. Really. Really. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what do I have to do to get you to take your hair down? Oh boy. I know. It's not pretty. It kind of just stays uh, back. Don't like, let him. Don't let him convince you otherwise. It's. Mm -hmm. It works once it's down, but once it's up. I'll take mine down. It just. You take yours down. Whoosh. All right. Let's party, baby. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it, baby. Yeah, Dad. Oh yeah. Get Look that at out that there, mane, baby. dude. See, I kind of look like a founding father. You guys are hot. It's just kind of like. Thank you, Reese. It just goes. It does. It's not the look. It does. No, you're cute, baby. <laughs> so on the topic of compliments, um, it is Valentine's Day. It is. It is. Are you? What's up, baby? Are you guys doing anything special for Valentine's Day? I'm gonna go Day home episodes? and cry, for sure. <laughs> I'm okay. gonna go home and console Reese while he cries, because my girlfriend doesn't live you here. Know, you know, <laughs> imagine having a girlfriend. It must be nice. <laughs> if, if there's one thing that I know that you guys have, you guys have that beautiful brotherly love. This and that's do. great. He's like a bigger brother that I've like always wanted. That's very know. nice. That Same with Hobie. Edward and Hobie Butcher and Eric. Yeah. Eric yep. Ficklestein. All people that These are aren't here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Rip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, do you guys believe in ghosts? I, I, oh yeah, dude. Yeah. A oh, lot yeah. of the Yuri EP is like, it's, it's like ghosts and it's like just dreaming in really? general. Do I'm really into it. Do it's you really have cool. any like ghost stories that no. influenced your writing? No. I wish. I really wish. I'm mm -hmm. like kind of a skeptic, but I've always like leaned towards believing in it. Yeah. Just never had an experience. I've always wanted one though. 
Frank, what about Man, you? My younger brother is super into yeah. paranormal stuff and ghost hunting. Uh, we've gone like on a bunch of ghost hunts and things and seen like really wacky stuff. And like I was always kind of on the fence about it until like, like I don't know, there was this one, t we were in Gettysburg and he was all like amped up on this ghost tour. We like <laughs> kind of stayed in this graveyard afterwards and like, I don't know man, this like rock was like thrown and no one was in this park and it missed me by a little bit after he was doing like some ghost voodoo with some different like tools and stuff and like it seemed like this ghost was mad from the questions he, uh, my brother was asking. Then this rock got thrown, and I was shaking the whole drive back to the hotel. And I've been, I've been pretty sold ever since, man. I'm That's jealous. pretty crazy, dude. Yeah. You know, did you call the Ghostbusters after? We we tried, but the number was down. Yeah, I think they're out of they're they're out of business now, unfortunately. I really could have used the help. That's all mm -hmm. I'm saying. Do you guys have any like bizarre childhood stories that have shaped who you are today? <laughs> I talk about this one a lot. Um, <laughs> when I was in sixth grade, I'm gonna leave him nameless. I don't think he's watching this. I haven't seen this guy in years. But um, I was in sixth grade and some kid came to school with his pants on backwards. <laughs> and I've been trying to figure out how it happened ever since. <laughs> he like, the thing was that, that when, when it was brought to his attention, he seemed genuinely incredibly surprised. He's like, he looked out, he's like, what? How did, I'm like, what do you mean, how did this happen? What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know, man. There was one time when I was in first grade. I, uh, we had these like little pencil cups on, on our desk and I was like an idiot. So I was gonna like pretend to slam my head on the, on the thing, <laughs> no. on the desk, just like for laughs. And all the pencils were up and I managed to land directly onto one. I pulled my head back up and it was just sticking out of my eye. I also got pantsed a bunch, <laughs> <laughs> which sucked. You got pantsed a bunch? Yeah, great. it was How come? Fun. Was it for like band? Was it like a... No, it's because people didn't like me and I was a loser. <laughs> That's suck. so mean, dude. Because I suck. <laughs> That's so mean. Well, look at you now. You're such a good musician. Oh, you're, stop it, you. You're talented. You're much more talented than all those mean Boardman Spartans. <laughs> you, know? you got them wide hips. I got them birthing hips, yeah. baby. So do you, guys, you. Uh, do you guys ever like play together? Actually, yes. Quite a bit. Neat. Quite a bit. So I, I heard from the grapevine you guys might be working on a new project, um, which we can talk about when you guys come on the show at a different date. We'll be back, yeah, and Frank's <laughs> going to play. All right. I know this isn't any fun to talk about, but we should. OK. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And I'll try to get the generator going without any gas. Oh, let's not forget the cell phones, which probably won't work. Right. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. Well, I think we couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. I've, yeah. It's not my first time bartending, so... It's a sausage party in here. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm very familiar. Yeah, because you're a sexy girl, Sam. Last thing, totally last thing, yeah. is that the music, when Momo kicks it into high gear, is going to get a little bit loud in here. Mm -hmm. So your customers are going to have a hard time hearing you. So you may want to. What? It's a big responsibility. Oh, it's huge. I know, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And the salary. Oh, my god, yes. Right? I mean, like, I was literally, I was about to move in with my parents. And right before, yeah, so this saved me. I, I really believe in you, you know? Thank you. It's nice to hear that from someone. <laughs> These are cool. Did you, um, what did you? Hey, look, it's those guys. Uh, are you good to try? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. 
and it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. So uh, my name is Frank Tonkar, and I'm going to play a song off of my uh, most recent EP called Diamond Eyes. Uh, and the song is called Walmart. It's about when I was uh, really sad a little while ago, and I couldn't figure out why. My friends, I love my girlfriend, I love my mom, I love my brothers, I love my dog, it seems like I have it all, I'm currently employed, and I get to make music. I sing these songs I like to sing And sing some that I don't It's not so bad That association between one thing and another can send you astray. But I tell myself I'm happy. I'd be crazy not to be. I've been blessed with great friends and opportunities that come my way. I'm happy Cause I think I really might be I'm so sick of writing these sad songs That's not me That's not me Thank you. 